and wreck TV. You a joke's bound to happen if you slipping or you lacking. I'm gripping on the matching, ready for the action. Shots will make you break dash and have you do a backspin. What, what's the name of that documentary? The Me and Raw Heat, then Inside the Mind of a Killer, the Brian Glyph story. It's on Amazon yeah, Prime. Yeah, that's right. It's on that's Amazon right. Prime. I oh, something, I gotta ask you. I think it was something, an interview I did with Raw Heat, and your name came up. It wasn't nothing with the client thing. It was something before that. And it was a few dudes in the comments, and I don't, I don't know what they was talking about, but it was like, yo, Rat, why are you mentioning rats and all that? What, what they talking about? I don't even know. But okay, let, let's sit back and think about it. Okay, here it is right now, Wiz. I made a deal, okay? Anytime, you said you made a deal? I made a deal. I made a deal with the United States government. Like, you know, anytime you sit down, you talk. Like, at one point in time, Rex, they try to say I mur average a murder a week. For June 87 up until November 8, I average a murder a week. You know what I'm saying? Every week. So you talk about, damn, there's 70-something murders that they try to put on me. So even right, right now, Wiz, when I made a deal was... Nobody, nobody gonna ever come along and say, Glade testify against me. I all went to jail because of Glaze. Never mm. happened. Okay. None of my crew, all my crew was either dead or nobody gonna come along and say, yo, he put me in jail. It's not mm. gonna happen. So even with that being said, mm -hmm. people can say what they want to say, but guess what? What's the difference? Did, you know, he point the finger? Did he get on the stand? Never gonna happen. Mm. Nobody's going to never say that under any circumstance. So, yeah, they're going to say, you know, but, but then again, it started back in 89 when, you know, they came out in a newspaper article that um, Brian Glaze just made a deal. But guess what? Never testified. Nobody went to jail because of me. You know what I'm saying? So it doesn't matter, man. Like at this present time, it's like what you're trying to do is how? How do you get these kids to understand? Don't put yourself in that predicament in the first place. It's rules because we say it's a rules. Mm -hmm. But bottom line is right now is guess what, man? When you're playing the game, guess what? It's how you play the game. Mm -hmm. When you play the game, you play the game to win. So to me, regardless of what, like I told you, by you spending the rest of your life in jail over some bull <laughs> did you win or do you lose? So yeah. just like you said right now, it's a different to everything. See, mm -hmm. I'm comfortable with my skin. I can go anywhere I want to go. I don't worry about nothing. Mm -hmm. you know, that's it. And that's how I've always been. I don't care right now. I don't visit guys in the penitentiary since I've been home. I don't want to see Tut, all these guys. So it doesn't mm -hmm. matter because people going to, like I told you, those who love you still going to love you. Those mm -hmm. who hate you still going to hate you. So it doesn't matter. Everybody want to talk about what they did, what they mm -hmm. didn't do, whatever. Like I told you, anytime, let me tell you something. Anytime you make a deal, even the Fed, if you plead guilty, you got to plead guilty to something. So you got to admit to something. Mm. So to me, like I said right now, is yes, I made a deal. I don't get caught up into that. Just like I said right now, I made a deal with the United States government. But yet and still, I am free. I'm not now, Blaze, not to cut you off, could I ask you what kind of deal was that? It was a cooperation deal. It was a deal that, like I said right now, was that spared me my death penalty and spared me from a life sentence. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So that's the deal that I made. So and what does that entail? Like that, that entail, like I said right now, I gave them all murders that they didn't even know about. Mm. Because like I say right now is when they came at me, they were trying mm. to get me on different <laughs> Like they gave me two murders that happened on June 17, 1987. So they gave me two murders and say, this is what you did. So, okay, let's sit back and think about it. Right now, which I want my lawyer. I'm around a bunch of, like I'm saying, state and feds guys, like I'm saying, guys from 75th precinct, 84th precinct, 83rd precinct, 81st precinct. You know, so right now, they telling me I killed two people in Fort Green Projects. So, okay, here it is. I say, Detective Richard Brew, when did I turn myself? I say right now, was when did I turn myself into you? After I ran out of court, it was me and Tuck. They gave us a tent murder charge. We mm. both got bailed out. And then when I went back to court, like the following few days later, they was going to rearrest me and charge me with murder and use the tent murder to corroborate the murder. So mm. I said, look, when I ran out of that court, I turned myself, when I turned myself back into you, say May 5th, 1986. I said, okay. Did I have a bail? No. I said, when did I got to quit it? Look at this paperwork. Mm. I got to quit it June 22nd, 1987. So now I look at the other detective from, like, you know, saying Brooklyn North. I say, so here it is. You mean to tell me the warden of Rikers Island let me out 
on June 17 to kill two people and let me come back in. So those are things when you see people trying to railroad you or you see what they try to do, clean up their book and give me all the unsolved murders in Brooklyn and Queens, that's not happening. Like my mm -hmm. case started was when that pro it was a rookie police officer, Edward Burns got killed, execution style. And when that rookie police got killed, everybody's walking down. I did it. Everybody from 103rd, 113, 75th, who, like I'm saying, got hard enough and crazy enough to kill a rookie police officer. Everybody blame me. Wow. So what I'm trying to say right now is this, mm -hmm. man. Like my my life is my life, my truth is my truth. And like I tell you right now, y'all made a deal, but nobody going to come along and say, yo, Glaze put me in jail. Glaze testified against me. Glaze went in front of the grand jury. No, yeah. let me ask you this. Now, those murders that you told him about, was those your murders? Or yeah. it was the, the, oh. the one, the, everything I'm responsible for is clear. I'm, mm. free, I'm free and clear. And even right now, what I admitted to, either like, you know, it was my murders or my guys that was down for me murders. So gotcha. murders that I orchestrated, murders that I was part of. Yeah. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Got gotcha. you. So basically, they had you for you know x amount of murders, and you basically told them like, "Yo, look, it's another ten murders that yeah. y'all don't know about." Listen, they had me for what I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. They think they had me. Okay. If they didn't, they everything like I told you is always speculation. Mm. Anytime shit happened, it was a murder that happened in the beauty salon over there by Lafayette Garden. It was a a, a, a guy, a gentleman. He got mm -hmm. killed. Uh, Petition got killed, and his kid got killed. So Damn. three people got killed, and this happened, I believe. I like to say, like you know, March, March, the end of March, probably March thirty first, nineteen eighty eight. And here it is, right now, when that happened, it was a UPS driver, and it was a pregnant black woman. And right now, like the people said, he's seen who did it. They took these people down and start showing a mugshot. Okay? Here there's a black pregnant woman pick out me as being the trigger man. And mm. that's a homicide. You know what I'm period. So here it is. Just so happened, some of the, the homicide detector at that present time, like, nah, that's not his MO. Mm -hmm. But what I'm just trying to say is, that's how it was back then. It's like right now where it's like anything dropped back then, yeah, they was throwing it at me. I'm the guy. Mm. Wow. That's crazy, yo. You got a, a crazy story, man. I, and I'm glad you shared that information because dudes was leaving. You know, all this. But, but like I tell you right now, man, listen, man. You, you're going to have so many different hypocrites. That's ridiculous. Mm. And like I said, when I come back through, I'll be in Cyprus. I'll be in, you know, all throughout Brooklyn, all throughout Queens or whatever. And then right now, when these the same guys that you see talking, they be like, oh, man, my man. You see, we don't got to pretend, man. Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't deal with clowns. I don't, I don't pretend with people. My philosophy is do they add value, they take value away. If they don't add value, it don't make me no difference. Man. Gotcha. And just like I said right now was, guess what? Not no person, no, not one individual since I've been out. You know what I'm saying? Or see me face to face, call me a rat. Yo, you're uh uh. Mm. You know what the funny part about him? I got this gangster. His name is El Shabe. And he's from Linda Plaza. We, we used to call him Black C, El Shabe. El Shabe gangster. You know what I'm saying? Period. I, I remember when I was a kid and I had my step pop 22 nickel plated. El Shabe pull out, you know what I'm saying? A uh, 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 38 long, probably had like five bodies on it already, man. And try to get me for that. So even me and him, like I done ran into him several times. And like I said, I look up to him. He's a type. You ever heard of one punch row? No. Row, row was row, row, it was an old timer from Brownsville. And he's okay. been houses. His name was One Punch Row. Row knocked out a damn horse on 42nd Street doing like you know, when that ball drop or whatever. Row was, old, row was an old gangster. So right now, Shabay used to go toe to toe with him. Shabay was the man. But anyway, I used to say, look, man. I done seen you several times. Why you neighbor came at me and like, yo, Blaze, you rat or you did. He said, look, man, when all that shit is going on and people saying this, people saying that, he said, man, look, I watch y'all little niggas grow up. You in touch. He said, I watch y'all cats. And he said, everywhere I went, state to state, wherever I went. Mm -hmm. That's what they talk about. Blaze and Tut, Blaze and Tut. What, what's the name of that documentary? That me and Roy Heat then inside the mind of a killer, the Brian Glyph story. It's on Amazon. Yeah, Prime. that's right. 
It's on that's Amazon right. Prime. Right. Um, like I said right now, is he did an excellent job. That's the book. Right now, is anybody can get a book. If you want a signed copy, guess mm -hmm. what? You know what I'm saying? Email me at BrianGibbs1201 at Yahoo.com. And guess what? For $20, I'll send you a signed copy. As long as you're in the United States. What? I hit the money dash when I catch a lick. If it's beef, then I'm blaming with the West and everybody out here. Scamming and finessing. Who can you trust? Don't mistake love for lust. Y'all can all get touched when the slugs go bust. Especially when niggas know you're the plug and such. You a joke's bound to happen if you slipping or you lacking. I'm gripping on the matching. Ready for the action. Shots to make you break down. And have you do a backspin I got more kicks than karate flicks My whole team pushing Maserati whips You on IG like in thotty pics Shorty pocket broke but her body fixed Peace world To promote your music Or promote your business By placing an ad on MREC TV Contact MREC TV promo M-R-E-C-K TV promo At gmail.com Peace. Oh yeah, subscribe to MREC TV, youtube.com slash MREC TV. I'm gone. MREC TV. It's got a music.